Hi, blah, blah. Hey. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How you doing? It's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. <laughs> Welcome to Saturday's Livecast here at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. What a couple of days we've been having. Oh, my goodness. This this cruise in Australia, whoa, we're having all kinds of fun talking about that today. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it just doesn't end. I've got comments like you can't believe, left, right, center, in between, everywhere else. I'm just organizing some stuff. I had promised some of you folks out there that one of these days I was going to show you what it's like outside my house. Well, I'm showing you what it's like outside my house. Hang on. You got, I'm carrying you. Watch this now. Don't get dizzy. Here we go. All right, see if you can see outside here. Oh, my goodness. We got snow coming down here in good old Creston, BC. I mean, we are getting it big time. I don't know if this was picking up at all. Uh, <laughs> that's the street I live on looking down and at my poor neighbors. And we've got snow falling all day. And we are supposed to get a good, I'm going to say, six inches of this stuff. And it's just coming down. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, I'm going to bring you back down to my little station here. There we go. <laughs> I'm glad I have an indoor job. I'll tell you that. I don't want to be uh, working as a snow snow remover or a uh, groundskeeper or anything like that. What a day. Just want to say thank you for joining me here on this uh, live chat. Uh, you found Bruce here at Crescent, British Columbia. Our temperature is about oh, 26, 27 Fahrenheit today. So it's too cold for the snow to fall and melt. Unfortunately, uh, that that kind of happens a lot here. We'll get a lot of snow, but it'll melt on the streets and it'll just accumulate on the lawn. Not happening today. It is falling and it's staying everywhere and it's just awful. What can I say? Uh, I've got messages coming in from viewers already. If this is your first time joining this live chat, thanks for coming aboard. Uh, what we do is is my uh, my viewers, they'll type in, they'll tell me, where, where are you watching me from? What uh, city or town or country, where are you? And tell me what your high temperature is going to be today. And that way you can make me jealous because all my Floridians tell me it's usually about 80 degrees. <laughs> my Californians tell me it's 60, 70, 80 degrees. My Australians tell me that it's upwards of 40 Celsius or more. <laughs> I love the heat, by the way. I love heat. Uh, but here in Crested, it's winter. And uh, today's a wintry day. We got snow falling and we got to come in with warning, weather warnings all over the place. It's just awful. And what can I tell you? And we'll talk cruising here as we go. Uh, George McCrower was, was the first to sign in. He signed in before I could give you the two-minute warning that I was getting ready to go on air. 80 degrees and partly cloudy in the villages, Florida, and no brawls in the villages. All is safe in the brawl in the, in the villages. No brawls today. Way to go, George. Uh, George, I did get your Facebook message. Thank you. <laughs> Just to answer that question. Heather Young is here. Hi, Bruce. Rainy here in Kentucky in the 40s. But are there any fist fights going on? That's what I want to know because it's happening in Australia on some cruise ships. Oh, my goodness. Uh, thanks, Heather, for joining me today. Uh, <laughs> who else is here? Oh, Charles Jordan's here. Good afternoon, Bruce. Debbie Emanuel. Hi, Bruce. 824 subscribers. Awesome. Steve Bartley is here. 50 in Greenlee, Colorado. Snow coming Monday. Uh, <laughs> who else is here? Try, try visiting. Hey, Bruce. Glad. <laughs> Glad I uh, made it. Uh, try visiting has made it to my live stream. Way to go. Fantastic. Doreen Chapman. Hi, Bruce. We have some white stuff, too. Um, Pamela Jordan. Hi, Bruce. Jessica Duncan. 54 degrees Fahrenheit in East Tennessee today. Welcome from East Tennessee. Great to have you. Uh, Michaela Smith. Hi, Bruce. 30 degrees and snowing here in Spokane, too. Yes, you are. We're just we're together on this one. We're, we're one. We're getting it, and we're getting it good because there's a, dis a specific disturbance that's causing snow in Vancouver, Vancouver, British Columbia. That's right on the Pacific Ocean, folks. Vancouver, Seattle, they generally don't get snow. They get rain, they're getting snow. <laughs> it's cool. It's going to be fun. Charles Jordan, 51 in rain here in uh, Iva. Uh, Debbie Emanuel pushing 70 in Northern California today. Sunny and beautiful. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> Isn't that great? Fantastic. Welcome, Debbie. Um, Deanne is here. It'll be 75 in Pasadena today, but truly, we need some rain. So this weather is, is not good news for us. And I'm sorry to hear it. Uh, of course, we're envious of, of the warm weather you get, uh, but we also feel it. Uh, we feel for you. Sorry, I just dropped my note. We feel for you when you really need rain and some moisture because those fires are just not what you want. You don't want any more of that kind of nonsense. And yeah, we hear you. Just uh, double checking my notes here. I wanted to say yesterday when I was off, get off, got off the air yesterday, we were at around 796 subscribers approximately. 
And uh, I think we were 796, 97, something like that. We're now at 823, 824. And so we've added another oh, 20, 20 plus uh, subscribers since overnight. Uh, this uh, this Australia story, huh, um, I posted the live video that we did yesterday. Um, it is now in my channel, the third most watched video of all time. <laughs> it's not saying a lot. It's not like I got a million views or anything, but, uh, you know, if you break three, four thousand views, you're kind of in my top five. Well, this one's at five thousand views uh, right now. And comments, oh my goodness, thumbs ups, thumbs downs. I'm getting it all. I'm getting comments from Aussies. Australians are writing me left and right. Some are very nice, some are not very nice. But it's okay. It's okay. I don't mind it. I love getting uh, comments. And if I'm wrong on something, tell me and I'll, uh, I'll address it. Uh, if I'm right on something you like it, tell me too. I love it. It's fantastic. So I'm getting comments everywhere. Engagement like crazy. This, this video is just popping. But YouTube has flagged it. <laughs> they won't pay me for it. They, they're, 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 they've classified it as a, uh, uh, a video not suitable for most advertisings, although Bruce has appealed it. Uh, and I'm still waiting for the appeal. Normally, appeal takes six hours. Yes or no? I haven't got an answer. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll get a dime off of that video. It's so funny. Uh, here I am trying to make a living on YouTube. And I'm working like crazy to give you folks the info you want to hear. And here's a great video. Just pop it. Not a dime from it. Not a, but I got subscribers from it. And that's the key. I actually need subscribers more than views. I'll take views. Believe me, I'll take views. But uh, subscribers, we need subscribers. We've got to get to 1,000 by Tuesday. And uh, we're now at 823, 824. So uh, within 170-odd Maybe. Uh, we'll see with today's live and then with Monday and Tuesday. Well, we'll see how it goes. If we don't make it, if we're just short, we're at 9.30, 9.40 on Tuesday. By Wednesday, well, the last 70 or so will come in a few days after that. We'll be hopefully quickly remonetized. We'll see. But in the meantime, we are plugging away. Oh, my goodness. And the comments keep coming. My folks are signing in. So I'm going to say hi to some more folks here. Uh, we've got... Uh, uh, Carol Brown is here. Hi, Bruce. Sunny, but cold in New Brunswick. 21 Fahrenheit. Yeah, it is. Uh, Crash 3X is here from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. My number one, my first ever uh, person to text me, to say hi to me on one of my live streams. My first ever live stream and and uh, subsequent. Hi, Crash 3X. Welcome to, welcome back. Doreen Chapman, uh, she's saying hi, Crash 3X. Uh, thanks for the chat today. See, my, my people talk. The peeps talk to each other, you see. Uh, S. Swan is here. Hi, Bruce. Hope you're getting your 1,000 subs. 40 degrees in Greensboro, North Carolina yesterday. It was 76 degrees yesterday. So it's 46, 40 now, 76 yesterday. Oops. Uh, yeah, we got a little cold front coming in, and it is uh, affecting uh, most of Western Canada and now down to the U.S., and then it's going to head over to the east. It's going to be a nasty couple of days on the weather front. It's not going to be not going to be fun at all. Okay, so let's talk about this cruise. Um in Australia on the Carnival uh, Legend. Uh, more updates and, and uh, give you folks an idea of what's going on. Some of you were here yesterday, some of you weren't. Uh, man, the, um, the media in Australia is just all over the story. It's all over Twitter. It's um, uh, Facebook chat pages, of course. Uh, hasn't been much on North American television here. We haven't, I haven't really seen much in the way of stories on CNN or anything like that, unless I've missed them. And that means it's not all over at CNN if I've missed them. Uh, but um, I've been reading up on it and, and trying to get more information. And, and I was quite curious to hear what were the passengers saying when the ship returned to um, Melbourne at the end of the cruise? Because uh, as most of you know, or some of you know, or most of you should know by now, uh, the cruise line stopped the ship in a town called Eden um the day before on the ninth day of the 10-day cruise they stopped on the ninth day and that's where the family was um escorted off the ship the family causing the problems or at least supposedly and uh they all got you know taken off by the police and um the ship then continued on overnight and then the next morning um this morning our time but obviously 12 plus hours ago now 14 hours ago it ended up in melbourne <coughs> and uh, passengers were coming off Media was waiting, and there were comments coming. So I've got updates from that and and everything else. So anyway, watching, you know, some of you folks have been telling me you've been watching the videos, you've seen them, I've seen them. Some of you haven't seen them. <clears throat> quite um, 
quite interesting. A number of videos didn't make it off the ship because security people apparently snapped phones from people's hands, and we, we haven't got information there. Um, so we're, we're kind of curious what's going on. I've got a few uh, uh, details for you. First of all, this was a 10-day cruise for the South Pacific, leaving Melbourne, returning to Melbourne. And um, typically, when, when passengers go on a 10-day cruise, uh, you're talking about, say, a balcony suite. Um, you're looking at $100, $130 a night, maybe $150 a night for your base fare because this is, after all, the summertime in Australia. This is holiday season. This is the best weather of the year, um, and it's a great time to go on a cruise. So, of course, you know this, this cruise would be in high demand. Uh, I believe the ship was sold out, uh, and so you have 2,900 passengers, something like that, on this ship. And uh, at $150 a night per person, that's $1,500 each. Taxes and fees are additional. Uh, and then if you want a, uh, if you could buy a drink package, and some people are saying you can, and some people are saying you can't, depending on the, uh, the rules in Australia. But even so, if you don't buy a drink package and you do buy drinks, um, if you're a light drinker and you have five or less in a day, I'm talking about alcohol. Um, you know, you're still looking at $25 a day in charges. That's 250 bucks for the cruise. If you're a, a moderate drinker and you like to have a glass of wine with your dinner, a few beers in the afternoon, that type of thing, maybe you're drinking eight to 10 drinks in a day because you're on holidays. So you don't have to drive your car anywhere. Uh, now you're looking at $50 a day. That's $500 for a bar tab. Uh, and I'm assuming taxes and tips are in there. But if you're, uh, looking to put one on and really enjoy yourself and you're drinking more like uh, 12 to 15 drinks a day uh which is what you have to do to equal the cost of a, a drink package if you're getting one in the united states for example off of off, say off of carnival or off of uh, norwegian or royal, royal caribbean here you know out of miami or whatever you want to you want to equal the cost of a drink package you're gonna have to you have to put down about 10 to 15 drinks a day depending on the drink uh, if it's if you're a cheap drinker <laughs> you cheap the, you drink the cheap beer uh, then you have to drink more. If you're a connoisseur of the scotch and a, and a nice rum and coke or rum uh, whatever, well, then, you know, maybe uh, maybe eight to ten drinks will equal the drink card. But um, nonetheless, you're talking about $100, $125 a day or more. You got a $1,000 bar tag. So per person, per adult. So think about that. Uh, you got $3,000 in your, your room, your taxes and fees, tips uh, for the cruise, drinks, uh, some specialty restaurants. Um, what are we talking about here? Uh, $2,500 to $3,000 a person for this cruise. It's a $6,000 a couple getaway. Now, you would expect if you're going to spend that kind of money, $6,000 for a week uh, on this kind of a cruise, um, the, the, the clientele on the cruise ship would most likely be of a uh, a middle class, upper middle class lifestyle, uh, you know, and certainly not unemployed, uh, you know, uh, people who are on welfare, uh, they're not going to be able to afford this. Um, you're paying some serious money, you're going to get a nice cruise. That would be the thinking. And uh, 99 point whatever percent of cruises are wonderful, pleasant experiences uh, until one isn't. And uh, here we have uh, this uh, this cruise, shockingly, uh, we have a, a group of people who uh, it's been alleged uh, kind of a all within one family group ing of sorts. Uh, some folks have called them a gang of marauders and all kinds of labels. But uh, the story goes that uh, that uh, 23 odd people were together uh, in a party, a party of 23. And it made up a number of cabins, obviously. Uh, and I'm doing the math going 23 people. Holy moly. Okay. Even if there's six or eight kids, 10 kids, you still got, you know, 13, 15 adults, uh, or at least people at adult fair. And I'm doing the mathematics. You're going to go 50, $60,000. How many, uh, this is a lot of money. These people spent to get on this cruise as a, as a family. And I'm thinking if you're paying that kind of money, you, you're going on a 10 day South Pacific cruise, you're going to relax and enjoy the, the, the outings, the excursions, uh, you're going to lie by the pool, you're going to have some nice meals, and uh, it'll be a pleasant experience. Not. <laughs> Not a pleasant experience. And uh, it seems that, according to a number of eyewitnesses, they were the, these folks were not actually um, relaxing all that much. It seemed that a certain party, certain members of the party, were quite aggressive and were quite uh, agitated and... Uh, um, they were not uh, pleasant to be around, and the uh, the uh, 
other passengers began to notice little signs of tension and uh, edginess that made them uncomfortable. And uh, some folks said from day one, these folks wanted trouble. Day one, they were ready to rumble. And uh, by day three, day four, there were issues. And there were isolated incidents already of intimidation, uh, people being cornered, uh, certain threats being made to certain passengers who then reported it to security and said, hey, we got, you know, we, I, I was confronted by four of these guys, two of these guys, five of these people. Um, families were concerned. Uh, mothers with children were not happy. And this was going. And uh, some of the passengers today were, were quoted today as saying it was a ticking time bomb. Uh, we knew it was going to happen. We knew there was going to be an explosion. There was going to be an absolute event. And there was more than one. And there we go. And now we have this, well, what happened and how did it happen and 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 why and why did it happen? Um, uh, now I'm hearing today the family that was escorted off the ship, they're complaining that they were picked on by security, that they're victims. They, they're calling themselves victims. And the rest of the crew, the rest of the, the passengers who arrived in Melbourne today were going, thank God we got them off, but I can't, we can't believe it took nine days. Why weren't they off the ship on day two, day three? What, what took Carnival so long? And of course, Carnival is just apologizing. They're just they're just doing what they have to do. Uh, they 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 don't want to say anything because their lawyers are saying, "Shut the heck up! Don't say anything!" Because anything that's said publicly by Carnival can be used against them in court if it ever went to court. And Carnival would rather just this go away. It's not going to go away because it's a sensational story, and we talk about this sort of stuff as fans of cruising. So uh, the family is, is claiming that they were harassed and there's some passengers who are starting to corab co co corab co agree. <laughs> They're corroborate? Corroborate. They're starting to corroborate. I don't have a side person that I can ask. See, I'm alone. Um, corroborate some of the stories. Uh, one individual was saying that, yeah, um, the, the family had caused some problems. Yeah, well, for sure. Uh, some of the members of that family, they were drinking heavily. They had uh, they had a lot of alcohol going, and the teenagers were drunk, too, because uh, they were being fed alcohol from the parents, uh, you know, quietly and discreetly. But it was showing. People could see it, and they knew, you know, they could smell it. Uh, and then there were incidents on board ship with passengers and these people. Uh, again, most, most reported, some not. Then uh, security got sort of started piling up a scorecard as to, you know, who's doing what. And I guess they had chats with some of these folks and things would simmer down for a few hours and then something would flare up again. But on uh, one of the days uh, towards the end of the cruise, um, one of the, well, several of the passengers have now been saying, oh yeah, the, uh, the security guards were, uh, were getting ready to uh, get vengeance, get ready, get a return on these guys. And um, there are quotes of uh, people who said that some of the security guards were taking their metal handcuffs off of their belts and putting them on their wrists, using the metal handcuffs as uh, brass knuckles. And uh, they had also contacted um, and brought upstairs from downstairs, from engineering where the uh, where the uh, the engine boiler room guys are. They brought up some of the beefy guys, the big boys that work downstairs. And uh, they told them that uh, we have a few problem people up here. We need your help to help us take care of these guys. And uh, the story goes uh, from some passengers and the family members that security jumped them, that uh, they were cornered in an area of the ship. The security guys uh, cornered them and they had it out. And um, this is where all these photos are coming from of uh, the bruises and the cuts and the scrapes and, and this. But uh, the, uh, the, uh, a lot of what was going on was not recorded on a camera. And uh, what, what I'm wondering is I know there are cameras all over, all over cruise ships. There are cameras on the promenade deck. There's cameras on the back of the ship. There's cameras all over the lifeboat areas. There's cameras in the public areas. There's cameras, uh, uh, you know, when you're walking down the hallway, there's cameras for all the elevators. There's cameras in every elevator. Every elevator has a camera. It's a security issue. If you get stuck in the elevator, they can see you and they can talk to you on the telephone and say, we see you. It's okay. Don't worry. We'll be all right. You know, cameras are there for a good reason, but cameras are also there for these kinds of incidents. If someone says he started it, no, he started it, the camera might clear clarify the issue well this this little rumble that took place or one of them we don't know if it's on camera or not and if the if the security guards have been uh, slapping literally slapping phones out of people's hands taking the phones away from people and they can't get the phone back for several hours when they get the phone back everything's deleted and erased 
Um, this is going to make you wonder what is going on here. And uh, now the the story gets deeper and murky, murkier, actually, rather than clearer. And uh, you ask yourself, well, is it a little of both, or is it one sided, or is it both sides? Were some other passengers picking fights with these guys because they thought they could take them on and uh, testosterone and alcohol and other substances uh, make people think they're a lot bigger than they are. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm an observer in Canada <laughs> trying to tell you what I hear, what I know, and I welcome your comments and I welcome your thoughts on it. And I got to tell you, there's just uh, just no end to the uh, to these stories. It's just unbelievable. So that's what I'm hearing. Uh, I'm just going to check here on some more messages, make sure I'm caught up. And if anyone has anything to say about this, uh, um, uh, let's see, Teresa, it's okay. Okay, Dylan is saying he's here from Henderson. Hey, hello to everybody. Sunny is 59 this morning here in Henderson, Nevada. Welcome, Dylan. Good to see you. Beth the Shoop is here. If 25% of your subscribers get one friend or family member to subscribe ASAP, that would be a good thing. I highly agree and concur. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, I was thinking if we got to about 900, uh, we'd only need 100 more, so we only need to find 100 people out of 900 that we have. And if you call a, a friend or a relative at work and say, hey, do me a favor. I love this guy. He's great. But we got to get him over 1,000 subs. I know you're a YouTuber. you got to check him out and subscribe to this guy. Would that be wonderful? Uh, maybe we can pop it up. But hey, whatever, however it happens, what happens, we'll have to see. Thank you, Beth. Crash3x is saying the family was rowdy for sure, but in no way uh, at any time does it allow five to seven crew staff to pin a passenger to a floor and hit and take turns kicking him. And this is this is the problem. This is uh, the this little issue going on here about um, what is Carnival Security doing and who are these guys? Are are these is this a security company that Carnival hires to handle security, or are these Carnival trained? in-house staff members and um who were they easily identifiable especially if they're on camera but what if by some fluke there's no footage on the ship cameras of any of this stuff what if it's all been erased we don't know and uh this is where i'm kind of wondering hmm this will be interesting to watch um <laughs> let's see what do we got here uh, uh a couple more messages here just to double check um sorry folks i lost my place and i'm trying to find it again here we go okay uh crash gx is saying hi we got crash gx's message and now uh richard cormask is here hi richard uh hi hey bruce the videos are very violent even the security guards were going after observers dylan larue what if you do what what do you do if someone makes these threats or remarks to you uh doreen chapman a gong show that's right uh this this really is something um uh, more uh, uh, more uh, issues have come up, and, and a couple more statements were made. The, the cruise line today or yesterday uh, apologized to all its passengers for the you know, for the incident. Sorry that it happened. They were regretful. Uh, they wanted to you know assure everyone that you know, passenger safety is paramount. All this sort of stuff. It's the old PR gobbledygook. And then they offered. Uh, passengers were asking for a full refund for this, you know, for this nightmare cruise. Uh, honeymooners were were there. They said they didn't leave the room the last four days of the cruise. They stayed in the room the whole time. They or, they ordered room service to eat. They would not leave their cabin. Uh, there were families with children. Same thing. Last three four days would not leave their cabins, and they want a refund. They're going. I, this I didn't sign up for this. This is ridiculous. I signed up for a ten day cruise. Beautiful weather. Uh, shore excursions and uh, and uh, lying by the pool and taking my kids to the play center in the back, the kids zone, and there were fights back there. There were fights over here. There was intimidation all over the place. These people were marauding all over the ship, and they, they wanted Carnival to do something about it, and they felt they didn't do anything about it until the day before when they conveniently dropped them off in Eden, and I can understand why Carnival would do that. You want to drop them off in Eden the day before, because you get them off the ship where there's not a lot of media waiting. Because who's expecting uh, 23 people to get kicked off a ship on a little town off the coast of Australia when Melbourne is just a couple hundred miles over here? The media is waiting in Melbourne. They're at the pier. They got the satellite trucks there ready to go. And they were dying to interview the family members. They were hoping for a big time scrum. They didn't get one because the cruise line did the smart thing from a PR point of view. And logistics, they parked it in Eden. They got them off the ship there. Video surfaced. We've seen video from people who were filming from the decks down to the ship, uh, these boats as they were loaded on, and off they went. 
uh, the the uh, the crews when it returned to Melbourne, the only people to talk to now were passengers, and you know you couldn't get the same story exactly every time. Although you got a general idea, you got a general theme, and there's a general overview. But then we got these other things coming out, like I was talking about with the security thing. So Carnival has offered a 25% credit against the future cruise. <laughs> Do you know what a lead balloon is? <laughs> A lead balloon? <laughs> Bonk. That, that ain't working. And that's that's not buying any brownie points with anybody. As a matter of fact, that has actually made cruisers more angry. And it's actually made cruisers like us out in the world going, really? Uh, that's what you're offering these terrified passengers? Uh, a 25% discount off a of future cruise? Uh, you haven't even mentioned what you're going to do about the one you just had. What's your solution to this problem? Dylan's asking me, what would you do if you were in this situation? Why? And I, I'm asking myself that too. I'm looking at my wife going, wow, yeah, we're 62. Are we going to take these guys on? <laughs> what are we going to do? Uh, would we want to be uh, walking the hallway of a cruise ship? Uh, like my wife uh, might be in the room at nine o'clock at night watching some television and I'm going for a walk on the promenade deck to get a bit of fresh air before I go to bed at night. Um, do I want to be out there alone? Um, I do actually want to be out there alone. I like walking around the promenade deck, love watching the waves crash against the ship, hearing the water, all that. I love that. It's what I love, one of the things I love about cruising. But what I don't want to be doing in uh, at 9.30 in the evening or whatever time it is that I'm wa walking around the promenade deck is worrying about whether someone is stalking me or three or four guys are just around the uh, pillar over there uh, looking to uh, show the old man who's boss. Uh, that's not what I came on this cruise ship for, and I'm sure all other passengers feel the same way. We want to know what Carnival intends to do uh, going forward with respect to ship security. And... Does that mean more security officers are patrolling uh, these decks? Does it mean there are security stations set up on board? Does it mean there's a lightning quick uh, group of security guards that will react to uh, to a situation like this? We need to know. Uh, we haven't heard that yet. But then Carnival's insisting, oh, well, we're, we're doing internal investigation about everything, including how our security team react to the reacted to the situation and all this sort of stuff. So the 25% credit is... Uh, not going over too well. Um, I did read a little snippet somewhere about, um, it was on Google this morning, one of the news reports out of Australia, that uh, Google is, uh, at, uh, Carnival, excuse me, is consider considering offering a 100% refund to passengers that were injured by these people on the cruise, uh, not, a, not a future credit. A number of people come out, have come off the ship today to say, yeah, we got this letter uh, this from the cruise from the cruise company on, you know, slipped under our door this morning, talking about a 25% future credit. And people saying, I'm never going on Carnival again. I'm never going on a Carnival cruise, ever. Uh, you can't get me to go on a Carnival trip, not with not with this nonsense going on. I, on a 10-day South Pacific cruise, this is happening. F forget about me going on a four-day cruise or a three-day cruise. You can forget about that. Uh, but now, you know, if, if a 10 day cruise isn't a safe place for me to be on involved with a car carnival ship, you haven't got a cruise that I'll take. I mean, why would I do that? So very interesting comments. And of course, carnival is praying that this is an isolated incident, Australia only, and it doesn't spread out to guess where United States of America and the state of Florida. Don't want to have Americans going, oh, geez, maybe we shouldn't go on a carnival ship uh, because of perhaps gangs being on the ship or, you know, a certain ne'er-do-wells uh, tearing up the joint. Uh, yeah, makes you wonder, doesn't it? So that that's what carnival's doing this. They actually don't want me doing this, what I'm doing right now. They don't want me talking about this. Uh, they don't want us talking about this. They want it to go away. It's not going away. This is a serious issue, and we need to know what the deal is. Um, gong show is what Doreen said. Um, <laughs> Karen B is saying these videos make you question the security on cruise ships. The ones on Carnival look like they were merely decoration. Uh, Anton Snell, 58 degrees and raining in Alabama. And uh, Austin Snell, Austin, welcome, welcome, uh, go tight, welcome back. Uh, Steve Bartley, what a surprise, newlyweds staying in the room. <laughs> well, you know, that was the last four days. You see, the first six days I thought they would stay in the room, and the last four days they'd come out now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're maybe they're real newlyweds, like real newly newlyweds. Okay, uh, who knows? Uh, <laughs> uh, Richard saying I'm planning of uh, sailing 
I'm pl- I'm I am planning of sailing from Australia next year on Carnival, and now I'm having second thoughts about the excessive drinking going on down with Australian cruises. Now, I believe Richard, were you not thinking of uh, was that just a, an uh, an Australia cruise only, or were you doing like a repositioning cruise from Australia up to North America? Because if it's on the uh, real positioning, I think you can be just fine. Uh, it's the repo uh, or the return, uh, you know, from Melbourne to Melbourne. But then again, maybe that's what you're doing, or Sydney to Sydney. I don't know. Be curious to know. Karen B is uh, saying here, um, we're having a blizzard in Louisville, and we were supposed to get rain, but serious snow came down instead. Cold cold weather coming down from the north. Uh, we got the snow. We're getting the cold weather next. Uh, yeah, it's a big system. Karen B, uh, really, Carnival, 25%. 25%? Uh, uh, cue the angry mob with torches and pitchforks. <laughs> Karen, Karen's letting go. Uh, she's she's let, she's telling us what she thinks. This is awesome, Karen. That's fantastic. Uh, Crash three X. I am uh, I am pretty scrappy. Uh, <laughs> after spending my hard earned money, uh, I would go after them verbally, and I would feel my hubby tugging my arm to stop. No doubt. No, doubt. honey, 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 honey. <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness! Uh, let's see here. Uh, 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 Bill Bill Shuck is here. Uh, if I've got that read right, I'm not sure if I can read that right. Bill Shuck. Not only is 25% off a future cruise an insult, but 25% off what price? The inflated price they alleged they discounted you. And I was going to mention you beat me to this one. Thank you so much. Uh, you reminded me about this. I was going to bring it up. Yeah, what? 25% off what? Exactly. Um, Folks, we know what we're doing when it comes to cruising. I think we do. Uh, I do. I have. I know. I have new viewers who join me all the time, and they're. I hope they're learning a lot. I'm sure they are watching this and listening to this. <clears throat> but um, uh, if you go online and look for a cruise on say vacationstogo.com, you're going to find cruise prices that are nowhere near what the so-called brochure price of a cruise is supposed to be. I'm going to tell you a secret. If you ever get a chance, ever. To become a participant at the Price is Right, and you actually make it to the showdown, the, the, the showcase showdown at the end of the show, and showcase number one comes around, and you're, you're the first person to bid on showcase number one, or you can pass, and inside showcase number one, those of you who are Price is Right fans, I know you know what I'm talking about. And you get to the uh, uh, point where they're offering you a cruise for two uh, from Miami on a one-week cruise to uh, to uh, the Caribbean and back on a uh, Carnival cruise ship or Holland America cruise ship uh, in a balcony, um, and and you decide you want to bid on that package, don't you be bidding five ninety nine a cabin uh, in your head for that? You're gonna be way under. Uh, you won't go over, which is good because on the prices right, you're not supposed to go over, right? You're supposed to stay under. But let me tell you, <laughs> the price is right, people. They, they'll tell you that the price of that cruise, if you were bidding on just that by itself, it's like $4,000 a person. It's unbelievable. What a cruise you're getting for a week. Who pays? Who do you know that pays $4,000 4, a person for a one-week cruise in a standard balcony suite on a Carnival cruise ship? No, no, nobody I know. Nobody. $8,000 a couple? Are you kidding me? So I'd be bidding $1,200. <laughs> and I'd be way under. <laughs> the guy next to me could go twelve oh one, and he'll win or she'll win. So, uh, yes, 25% off what? If it's a 25% off the rack rate of four grand, they give you $1,000 off. They want three grand for that cruise. You could turn around and go to vacationstogo.com, which is what I've been telling you to do, and you've been watching my videos. You know how I uh, show you how to do it. Uh, and you can find that cruise for six ninety nine, seven forty nine. Uh, you know, with a hundred dollar credit, uh, a room credit, maybe a maybe a free, um, you know, fifty dollar whatever package. All kinds of stuff thrown in. So yeah, twenty five percent or what? You're not you're not going to get twenty five percent off the six hundred dollar price because that's not the regular price of the cruise. So this is absolute butt kiss. This is they would have been better off handing the passengers a a letter. That says this letter gives you a five hundred dollar onboard ship credit for any cruise seven days or longer, anything like that. Now that's real. That that's something tangible because now you can book a cruise. You know you got a five hundred dollars credit in your hand. If there's an offer already, maybe you can get that on top of it. If you're a shareholder of Carnival, 
which I've told everyone to do, become a shareholder of Carnival or Norwegian or Royal Caribbean. You get a shareholder shipboard credit on any cruise you take on any of the cruise lines these guys own. And then there's something in there's something in your hand of real value. But this 25% off what is is uh, yeah, it's it's butt kiss. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, uh, Doreen Chapman, I would be pissed after saving all year for our vacation. You're, you save, you script and you save, and you found the discount deal. You talked to your travel agent. You found the flight. You, you spent a night in a hotel before you got there. You got on the ship, and you, you, know, you, you brought your two bottles of wine on board to save money. You're doing what I'm doing. You brought some coal on board to save you money. And you got a bunch of yahoos ripping the place apart, picking fights because you don't like the look of your whatever. I mean, th this is not what I was signing up for. On a 10-day cruise, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, on the Ted Nugent comedy hour, you know, the three-day uh, booze fest, I can understand a little bit of rambunctiousness kicking in here. Uh, yeah, but that, this is not good. Crash 3X, well, at least this issue is giving MSC Seaside a break from all the talk about bad smells. And I've had comments about that since yesterday, too. It's funny. Yeah, people are talking to me about, wow, no one's talking about MSC Seaside all of a sudden. Yeah, I'm waiting right now for... The latest uh, offer to come from MSC Seaside, some of you have heard about it, a little inkling about it, the so-called two-for-one deals. Uh, there's a rumor going around that MSC is going to try to up the occupancy rate of the Seaside because of all the bad press, cancellations all over the place. Uh, they're trying, they're, they're talking about offering a two-for-one deal. So it might be, uh, you know, the first person pays $800 for the balcony, the second person can come for free. All you got to do is pay taxes and, and port charges additionally, and then your your tips. Well, uh, you know, then if it's, it's eight hundred, it's a four hundred dollar cruise. And if it's a balcony and it's an upper balcony, I take that deal. But if you want to, you want to put me on a uh, on an ocean view room or an inside room on deck four or deck five, I don't care for the two for one because that's where the poop smell comes from. That's where it was, and I don't want to be the guy playing the Russian roulette on that cruise. I'd rather be on a balcony upstairs where I can at least open the door if it if it got bad. But I really, I, I haven't heard anything yet. We'll have to see if this really goes anywhere. MSC insists that they have repaired the mechanical issue that caused the problem. That's what they've said. Now we'll see if that comes true or not. We'll have to hear it. Uh, <laughs> Richard's saying repositioning to LA from Sydney. Richard, you're fine. You're good. Take the cruise. You're good. Not a problem. The, the family from hell uh, took a 10-day cruise to get back to their hometown. Uh, so no, you're the. Uh, here's the other good news for you. <laughs> this is really good news. <laughs> the ship ends in the United States. The the cruise ends in the U.S. I wouldn't want to be that family. That family creating those problems, and the ship is going to end up in Los Angeles, and you're going to be taken in by the LAPD. I don't. I don't. I don't want to be those guys. Oh, the world of hurt they're going to have on the legal bills. Because when the DA gets through with them and charges them with 25 counts of who knows what, the fees for the lawyers will bankrupt them. I, I wouldn't raise a finger against anyone on that ship, in particular an American. <laughs> You're good to go. Uh, you, it's all good, Richard. <laughs> this is a Canadian telling an American, it's good to be an American. You're going to be just fine. <laughs> Austin Snell is saying, have a cruise on Carnival in April. Hope this was just an isolated incident. Generally speaking, these are isolated in the incidents. Austin, you should be fine. Um, but, um, you know, the shorter the cruise, the more people are trying to get the cruise in in a shorter period of time, if you kind of get what I'm coming from. If you only have 72 hours to be on a cruise ship instead of a week, uh, you only got three days to enjoy the food. You've only got three days to enjoy the music. You've only got three days to drink your booze. You've only got three days to chase the other half or be chased by the other half. You know, party time is, is a 72-hour window or less, and so you got to get the party in. And so uh, people are hurrying up to enjoy themselves, hurrying up to have a party. This is all bad news. Okay, so the longer the cruise, the better. But here we had a 10-day cruise in the South Pacific. What went wrong? 240-hour cruise, and we got a cruise from hell. Unbelievable. This is what makes this story so incredible. I heard one passenger say, uh, we should rename the ship the UFC uh, Carnival Legend. <laughs> Someone's got a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. 
Okay, who else we got here? Uh, Crash 3X, 379. I don't know what that means. Uh, Karen B, a Royal Caribbean canceled my cruise last October and gave me a 100% back and a 30% off a future cruise. We are going on Symphony of the Seas in December. Well done, Royal Caribbean. Absolutely well done. This is uh, this is paying dividends right now. You haven't even been on the ship yet, and you're already happy. You're already happy. And you're telling everybody, because you're telling me, and we're letting the world know that good move, Royal Caribbean, real good move. Sylvan Forrest is here. Sylvan, hi, Bruce. It's too early for rum and coke with a cigar. But it is nice to be here. We are 84 degrees Fahrenheit here in Delray Beach, Florida, and loving it. Welcome back, sir. I know every day, Monday to Friday, you catch me most times. And by the time I'm on, it's 5 Eastern and the cigar is out. And so is the rum and coke. And life is good. And welcome back from Delray. Uh, Perry uh, Carruthers here. This is amazing. I've been on 13 Carnival Cruises, and I've only seen one jerk. And I'm, you know, I'm not surprised, actually, that that's the case. Because usually that's exactly the case. You go on a cruise with Royal Caribbean, it's usually a great time. Uh, it's usually a fantastic experience. Carnival is a great company. The corporation, they know what they're doing. They're big. They own Holland America. They own Princess Cruise Lines. They own Cunard. They own Seaborn. They own Ada Cruising in, in uh, for the German market. They own P&O. Uh, they're big, and they know their stuff. They've got staff around the planet. But they had a family from hell on one cruise off of the southern coast of Australia. And they are scrambling at corporate head office and Australia's office. They are scrambling. And uh, they are uh, talking to lawyers, PR people. Uh, they're looking for ways to limit the PR fallout. And uh, hopefully they'll they'll do it right. But this 25% credit off a of future cruise, they blew it with that one. Just blew it. Absolutely. Uh, that's a stinker. Uh, and that was an insult to the people who were terrorized on that cruise. Now, I have heard and saw quotes from people who said they knew nothing about this problem. They were on the cruise for 10 days. They didn't know there was a problem. They had a wonderful time. They, they said they went all over the ship and they saw the shows and they went to the restaurants and they were by the pool. They went to the spa. They, they had a lovely time. And they were surprised when in under the door on the night before they were leaving, 25% credit off any future ship with a big apology. They're going, apology for what? Now they're finding out when they get home, they're talking to all their friends going, were you in the Were you in the fight too? You look pretty good. You haven't got a scratch on you. Did you pulverize them? Surprise, surprise for a lot of folks too. So, you know, this, this is really is... Uh, an anomaly, a serious anomaly, Perry. It really is amazing. George uh, Macra Macra is saying, uh, uh, and de-stinking the serenade does not fix the food, customer service, entertainment, and other currency deficiencies on board. Well said, George. You got it. That's exactly right. Uh, the MCC side has not got one problem. The sim MCC side has got six, nine... A myriad of problems and they have been coming out from cruisers and from youtubers and uh from the public all over the place those folks need um uh, staff they got to steal staff from north american cruise lines that's what they got to do they got to steal some RC, uh, royal caribbean people norwegian people carnival people all in america but you got to get some of these folks to run that ship you got to got to change the food you either show the chef how to cook north american food or get another one in there send them back to paris or where he's from, because he's making everybody mad. Uh, the entertainment. Get rid of the entertainment director. Fix that problem right now. Bring on entertainers from uh, somewhere else, because this isn't working. And then the customer service staff. Oh, my goodness. On MSC Seaside, these poor people who are taking the complaints at the front desk, they're shell-shocked. I'm sure they're just like, they can't believe it. Every passenger's coming at them going, can't be good. You know, it's just a myriad of issues. George, you're absolutely right. Dylan, sometimes you get tired of fighting with your neighbors and you decide to go on a boat. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've beaten this guy up so many times. There's nothing left to beat. I mean, I, this is a wimp. I got to go. I got I to gotta get me some serious action here. I need to find a mom and dad with three kids so I can terrorize the heck out of these people on a 10-day South of South Pacific cruise. That's going to make my life complete. Is, is that ridiculous? I mean, geez, what's going on? Crazy. Charles Jordan. Hey, all, make sure to give Bruce a thumbs up. 
Thank you, Charles. Anybody out there giving me a thumbs up today, I'd really appreciate it. I got a whole lot of thumbs down on my last video. <laughs> but I got a lot of thumbs ups too. So I'll take the thumbs ups. But if you give me thumbs downs, whatever, well, I'll take it too. Barry Shibley is here. Bruce, happy Chinese New Year. You're of the dog to you and all your followers. Thanks, Barry. <laughs> That's a friend of mine. Oh, my goodness. I haven't too much fun here, Barry. The streaming beat. Does the MSC crew tell their guests on disembarkations? Disembarkation. Smell you later. <laughs> nasty, nasty, but I liked it. Uh, Randy Lucas is saying, just subscribe, like your attitude and delivery. Randy, thank you very much for joining us. Tell us, where are you watching us from? What's your high temperature today? Everyone else has been telling us what their temperature is like and what the weather's like. Here in Creston, BC, where I am, I'm three miles north of the Idaho border. America's just over there. I can see, well, I can't see it now. It's actually behind clouds because we're getting snow here. We're probably getting six inches. We're at an inch now. It's five to go. And we're at about 25, 26 degrees. Let us know where you're from. Thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it. And find another friend to join us. <laughs> That's what we've been telling. We've been telling all our existing subscribers, you got to find a friend. You got to look. If one quarter of you folks could just find one person each to join this channel as a subscriber, we get to a thousand subscribers. We need to be at a thousand subscribers by Tuesday. That's in three days because if I don't get there, I'm demonetized. Oh no, not that it, it affects you. It's a free broadcast, but it affects me. But anyway, thank you for joining. I love it. That's my commercial. Next, Sylvan Forrest is saying, I have been on uh, uh, only on only one carnival uh, and two waiters came to blows <laughs> over counter space in the dining room. It took four other waiters to separate them. Carnival never again for us. <laughs> so that's a beauty. That's a beautiful story. Two waiters come to blows in the dining room. Oh, man, have we got a show tonight. Folks, it's formal night. Put your tuxedos on. Have a seat, grab a drink, and watch the action. We've got UFC between our waiters. Oh, no. <laughs> That's terrible. Unbelievable, Sylvan. Charles Jordan, laugh out loud, Bean. He loved your comment. Donna McMahon-Kinnon is here. Hi, 34 here in Beloit, Wisconsin. Welcome, uh, Donna. It's good to see you. Uh, we're a little cooler than you are. We're getting snow here, and it's getting cold across North America in many spots. So <laughs> I'll tell you, it's quite, quite crazy. Nice to have you back. Unbelievable. Yeah, I got to say, folks, this uh, this uh, Australia story is getting more bizarre and more detailed as we go. I mean, it just it, it, you just peel back a little layer of the onion, and there's another layer, and you peel back, and there's another one, and then there's another. It's just not stopping. And uh, uh, these poor passengers coming off the ship today in Melbourne, you know, after this 10-day ordeal, uh, they've just had enough. And... Um, very good comments made today about, you know, what if you saved for a year or two to do this, you know, once every five years you could have a holiday like this, a 10-day South Pacific cruise. It sounds perfect. Coming out of one of the most beautiful cities on the planet, Melbourne. Um, you talk about one of the top 25 cities in the world to live. You got Sydney in the top 25. Melbourne's in, in the top 25. It's beautiful. Uh, my my uh, friends in, in Australia, I, I, I'm getting more all the time because they're watching me, <laughs> obviously. Uh, what a great country you have and, and wonderful people. Uh, I had one fellow yesterday, he was really upset with me. He uh, said, oh, you should do more research on what you're saying. And I'm going, well, I would I, if I could. But the story is six hours old. I'm just hearing what I'm hearing. I'm telling you what I know. But I have to say here in Canada, we have so many folks from Australia who come here and visit Canada. We have, them, we have the winter visitors who come here for snowboarding and skiing, of course. And then we have the summer visitors. And they're here to, to hike and to bike and to, uh, to grab an RV and camp. And, you know, they love it here. And we, we love them. They're wonderful people, uh, great attitude, uh, super stories, fantastic lot. And, uh, you know, we're all part of the Commonwealth. We have the queen on our money, I think, uh, more or less, at least on our coins we do. And uh, it's just great. But this, this story was such a, this, such a downer. And uh, we, I was kind of uh, taken aback by the fact that the, the problems, uh, you know, one of the, the one fellow who was kind of critical of me saying, uh, you're, you're accusing Aussies of being troublemakers. And I'm going, it wasn't an Australian group that caused it. 
it was actually another ethnicity that uh, did it. And uh, it's up for debate exactly what their ethnicity is. There's been rumors all across the board. Won't bother going there. But it, they were picking on the Australians. I mean, geez, what, why would you want to pick on an Aussie? They're, they're fantastic folks. Uh, you want to have a great time at a party? Bring an, uh, invite a couple of Aussies to your party. You're going to have a great time. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful time. So I, I am at a loss. Uh, it's, uh, it's really shocking. I'm, I'm sure that the carnival management in, in Melbourne, the, the, the management of the carnival, for carnival, it's called Carnival PLC, which I believe stands for Pacific Lines Corporation. They were shocked uh, when they heard the news, probably from the captain, that they have an incident on the ship. Uh, I don't know how long the captain took to tell head office what was going on, um, whether the hotel staff or security reports back. I don't know how that works, but um, I can imagine that the the Australian uh, offices of Carnival were dumbfounded when they when they heard this happening on that cruise, that ship there. You got to be kidding me! They had an incident in Sydney Harbor. Uh, you, I, I know some of you folks know this. Last week there was an incident. There was a three or four day comedy cruise where they had a bunch of folks and a couple of laugh people comedians uh it was actually a booze cruise with comedians telling jokes um and there was a long lineup for the public bathrooms on the pool deck and there's the men's and there's the women's and the story seems to be that an individual male decided to couldn't wait any longer and he just decided he wanted to go into the female bathroom because he could elbow his way in there. Well, there was one gal who wasn't having any of this. She was about 36, 37 years old. Uh, they quote, uh, they say that she's a Russian woman. Don't know what that means. But apparently she grabbed an empty bottle of wine and it broke over his head. <laughs> and then they, there was a mealy, a mealy that followed. <laughs> and eight people were involved in a Donnybrook and all eight were expelled off the ship. They took that ship right back to the city and turned it around wherever they were going to for the three-day cruise, four-day cruise, turned right back to Sydney Harbor, called the cops. The police uh, patrol boat came out to the harbor, and they offloaded all eight right there on the spot, and they sent a message to all the other passengers. Who's next? Any, anybody want to play this game? Uh, we're, uh, these folks are off. And they made a point of sending a letter to all passengers that not only are these folks kicked off the ship, but they have been blacklisted. Uh, and forbidden to take any carnival cruise ever again, all brands, all the lines. So they can't go on a Cunard ship. They can't go on a Hall America, Prince, banned for life. You're, that's it. You're done. We don't want you. We don't need your business. And so that was a serious message they sent to the rest of the passengers. No incidents. Everyone had a good time. And isn't that what you want to be doing? So, wow, quite something. Didn't do that this time, did they? Yet. Uh, I don't know what the ramifications are for this family of 23 yet. We haven't heard. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what's going on. Uh, Randy Lucas is here, uh, located in Paradise, California. R Randy, that's fantastic. Uh, high of 65 today. Ah, life in paradise. Yes, sir, it is. And uh, welcome you as a new subscriber. It's great. Thanks for telling us. Paula K. Hi, Bruce. 23 and snow on the way in Hanover, PA. Yeah, it's coming. Sorry to say, Paula, it's coming and it's not going to be fun. <laughs> it's just going to be a mess. What can I say? Uh, yeah, not good. Richard saying, what is distressing from the YouTube videos on the incident? It shows the carnival security people kicking the heck out of people who were down and security trying to punch a lady filming it. This this exactly is exactly right. Um, there's one individual uh, who, who I believe is a victim in this. Um, and I, I'm, 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 I, I, although I started to have doubts this morning, I wasn't exactly sure, but I believe he was, <coughs> excuse me, he, he claims he was assaulted by the, the family members, some of these family members. And the story goes that, that, uh, that he um, was involved in, a, in, a, in an incident. He got uh, beat up, bloodied up. And the security staff, they weren't sure whether he was an instigator or whether he was a, uh, a, a, you know, one, of the, one of the passengers being picked on. 20-year-old guy, uh, the security people took him back to his room, to his cabin, and they locked him in. On the cruise ship, uh, this, the, uh, the uh, cruise ship can work the lock on your door to keep you in the room. So he was locked in his room. <clears throat> he had a cell phone with him, and he had taken photos of uh, some of the melee and uh, video as well. And then he took photos of himself. Now, I don't know if his roommate, roommate was with him in the room when he was locked in or not. I don't know. But there are photos of the back of his head where there was, it was a 
blood coming out, and other issues, other pictures of bruising and so on. He called his father on the cell phone. The cell phone had a signal, and he called his father on land, told his dad what was going on, asked him to call the police. Do you want to report this? And uh, he then texted his father the photos and the videos. And apparently, from what I can gather from my location here, and anyone out there can help me uh, clear this up, I'd appreciate it. The video we've been watching of the security guards kicking the passenger down in that lobby area just outside a nightclub area there, that was the video he shot, apparently. And um, uh, that's how we got it. That's how the TV stations got it in Australia. Now, I, I might be wrong. It might be someone totally different who was able to do the same thing and get it texted or, or, or you know, emailed out somehow. Uh, but a number of people's cameras had been confiscated and cleared of memory of the entire incident. And that's disturbing to me. This is where this is, where this is, this is not adding up as a slam dunk as oh yeah there were you know 23 people in one party a bunch of guys in that group got drunk and just created all kinds of am and everything can be blamed on them and nothing but them why then would security want to eliminate evidence of that and the evidence they're trying to eliminate are bad deeds by the security team that might be the issue and this is bad news for carnival because if some people take carnival to court for damages or you know whatever you want to call it I'm not sure what the court system is like in australia compared to the us i don't think it's as litigious in australia as it is in the united states but a class action lawsuit could be a nasty one and uh carnival that's what why they may be very quiet right now uh but evidence is already it's already evident from numerous sources that cameras have been seized and uh, memory uh, photos and videos erased by carnival staff that's a no-no that's a problem and i'm sure the lawyers for carnival are are grappling with this right now and this is why this this 25 percent thing to me uh boy that's that that's not good you're just making people mad now if you'd have given them a credit 500 dollars credit for per person or per cabin maybe that will have quelled you know half the passengers but right right now i don't know how many passengers are happy with this deal uh certainly a lot of folks affected badly are not so we're gonna have to see how this uh how this thing's going uh let's see now terence is here uh we're going on our third msc davina cruise next week we are former holland america cruisers who found msc and love it food is great the shows are the best that we've ever seen on a cruise ship fantastic i know the davina has been sailing a while uh it's gotten very good reviews it's apparently quite a well-run ship pardon me one sec it gets uh, good reviews um I don't know how the entertainment compares to the seaside, whether there's a similarity or not. Um, I don't know. Now, there are a number of people out there who swear by MSC. North Americans, I'm going to say North Americans. We know MSC is a European-based company, just for those folks, you folks out there who don't know. MSC is based out of Switzerland. It's a private company. They're owned by a container ship corporation. That's the second largest container ship company on the planet. It's a big mother company. Then the second company, MSC, is big in its own right, but its owners are bigger. And they're out of Switzerland, tax-free country. And uh, MSC has got seven new ships on order right now. Uh, every year, a new ship is coming out. I think the next one is in like five months. So they're growing quickly, and they're coming into the North American market. Now... MSC Davina has been in the Caribbean for a couple of years, but the MSC Davina doesn't advertise itself to North American passengers very heavily or very aggressively. And the reason is, and has been, that the Davina was always sold out because the Europeans flying in. Europeans would fly into Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and they would pre-book the Davina from in Europe, and the ship was full every week, full of Europeans. And so the food was of a European variety. The entertainment appeal to the uh, European cruiser. Uh, the staff spoke multiple languages, specifically European languages, English as well, obviously. Announcements would be made in various languages. And so the Davina was kind of like a little bit, a bit of Europe in North America, applying the, North, uh, the Caribbean area. But now the second ship comes out, MSC Seaside, Brand new design, never been built like this before, never looked, no ship has ever looked like this before. What a beautiful design. It's stunning. It's breathtaking. It's an amazing look. Uh, and and uh, everything is new on board this ship. And there's the problem, one of the problems. Everything's new on board. 
But the staff, the staff had to be cobblestone together from a whole bunch of MSC ships. So they took staff from the Divina. They took staff from some of the ships in the Mediterranean. They took some of the crew from, from other MSC ships. And they put together 12, 1,500 staff members and put them on the MSC seaside. And they put the whole ship in Miami. Well, the first cruise out of Miami for the MSC seaside was probably the first cruise for most of the crew. They probably had never done that route before. And the ship is being heavily promoted to North American cruisers through travel agencies. Heavily promoted. All kinds of travel agents got freebies, free cruises and stuff to come on board and enjoy it and recommend it to their clients. There's one YouTuber who is a travel agent who went on board the ship with his camera and he did a beautiful video, a wonderful video of the ship. He walked it all. He showed us all the public areas. He showed us the cabin that he had. Gorgeous, good, breathtaking. But what he didn't realize was the issues that other people were having on the ship. And after he got off his cruise, he was on a balcony suite, I think higher up, so he wasn't affected by the poop smell. He uh, realized uh, he had booked a whole bunch of people onto that cruise, and he was getting a whole bunch of complaints from his clients saying, what are you doing? Put me on this ship. We got problems all over the place. Nightmare this, nightmare that, nightmare that. And now he stopped taking bookings entirely. He won't book a passenger on the MSC Seaside. So this is uh, a, real, uh, a real shock to, obviously, this travel agent, other travel agents, and then all of us. And um, and now we've been seeing these reviews from ordinary travelers who got caught up in the, the dark side of the MSC Seaside. So on the Davina, all is well. And if you were on the Holland America line, which is fine, fine line, uh, and you're happier on MSC, I can see why. It, it's a wonderful cruise, excellent quality. The, 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 um, the ship is beautiful. The interiors of the ships, fantastic. The rooms are beautiful. But um, the MSC Seaside has had its issues, and that's where the black eye has uh, been made. And now we're seeing discounts on the cabins. Even without this rumored two-for-one sale that's supposed to be coming, uh, you can get a balcony on, a, on the MSC Seaside in the low 600s per person per week for the, uh, for the Caribbean cruise. That is telling on a brand new cruise ship. The, usually the first year, you can't get on it for under 850 a, a week. 900, you can't get on it. It's sold out, not the MSC Seaside. It's not sold out. And that is the, you know, the big issue here. And now we're going to find out if they're going to do some more, uh, some more uh, promotions to get people to come on the ship. Very interesting. Um, Richard is saying uh, regarding the, uh, the uh, brouhaha in Australia, if you read the, uh, that article, the guy locked in. He sent the info to his dad and the police. Then an hour later, security comes in, wipes his phone to delete all the evidence. Exactly right. That's, that is the end of the story. Thank you for reminding me, Richard. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. His phone, when he got off the ship, he had nothing on it, but he got everything to his dad and they got it to the cops and it went to the media. The media has got it. Now it's everywhere. It's gone viral. Doreen Chapman just watched the brawl. Wicked. Yes, it is Doreen. Debbie Emanuel saying, hi, uh, Randy Lucas, just down the hill from you is the most beautiful day here. Gotta love Northern California. Debbie, you got a neighbor. There you go. Uh, Dylan LaRue, are there any more new ships coming from MSC? Yeah, there's another one coming. Uh, the MSC, is it the Sunrise, the Seaside, the Sun? There's a, there's a, there's a new one coming uh, in about four or five months, identical to the Seaside. And, oh, boy, uh, I can imagine at the uh, shipyard, they are doing quality control checks like you can't believe for any, any of the systems that failed on the seaside they're getting reports daily reports from the maintenance crew on the seaside back to the shipyard this failed this failed this failed this so they're making arrangements but until you fill the passengers up until you put that ship through its paces with a full load of passengers and crew and run it for a week or two solid you won't know if it can handle it or not so i wouldn't take the first two or three cruises on that one either <laughs> Just saying. Uh, Paula Kay is saying, just watch the fight also. Terrible. What a shame. Terrence, hey, Dylan. Yes, uh, about one per year for the next seven years. Yeah. Yeah, they got seven on order, and uh, that is $10, $12 billion in, in order. It's unbelievable. The amount of money that MSC is dropping, huge. Now, right now, the MSC Seaside is not making money. 
uh, it's not even breaking even. It's costing MSC money for every cruise they put together, but they're investing in it. It's it's just it's the price you have to pay. You're the new kid on the block. You're going to have to run six months of losses, maybe a year of losses or break even at best and try to build a reputation. Well, right now they are scrambling from below ground. They're, they're not even at par, they're over par and they've got to come back. And so they have got to come up with ways to entice and enhance us to want to get on that cruise. And what they're in need of in desperate desperation is they need guys like me, actually, YouTubers, they need guys like me to go on that ship, take the cruise, and then report back and say, it's great, all is well, had a wonderful time, checked for smells everywhere, couldn't find them. That's what they need. But they haven't called me. Uh, they've noticed that I don't have a, a thousand subscribers yet, so they're not taking me seriously. I only have 823, 824. They're waiting for me to get to a thousand subscribers. So, folks, if you want me to go out there on your behalf <laughs> and go on that ship for you and help you out, you know, I I'm willing to be the guinea pig. You got to help me out. You got to get me to a thousand subscribers. <laughs> Maybe you folks are saying, no, Bruce, we don't want to subject you to that kind of torture. We're going to keep you below thousand subscribers so you don't get exposed to that kind of you know, terrible situation. I really appreciate that. I, I really do. But, you know, I think I can, I thought I could handle myself until I saw the videos coming from Australia. Now I realize, no, I can't handle myself. <laughs> so we'll, we'll just see how it goes. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, uh, Doreen is saying that the ships for MSC, they're all going to the U.S. I believe that's right. Um uh, Doreen, uh, or, or well, Terrence, maybe I doubt it. It could be a mix of two, but there's more and more coming to the States. There'll be ships in uh, off of California. There'll be ships, of course, more in the Caribbean. Then there'll be uh, the ships going through the Panama Canal. Uh, then we're going to have the Hawaii uh, connection. Uh, then we're going to have the round the world cruising. And so there'll be a lot of ships arranged, uh, be arranged for the U.S., obviously the Northeast U.S. as well, you know, uh, New England, Canada. There'll be a route established for that too so you'll see a quite a number of higher number of msc ships how many in total i don't know in in north america but they are expanding aggressively and they're uh, they're uh, they're not going to stop they're going to keep on coming uh <laughs> dylan's saying i'd like to grow in one of those if the price is right uh and, you know and, 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 well if we could do a group cruise yeah but i'll tell you i wouldn't i wouldn't want to make my first uh my first get together cruise with you guys uh on a ship that might be a pooper. I don't want to do that to you. I don't want to do that to me. Uh, so <laughs> I might be a little more conservative on the first one and then, you know, go from there. Well, we'll see. Heather Young is saying 827 now. That That's four since I've been on the air. I'll tell you what, why don't we just stay on the air the whole time until I get to 1,000? We just, we'll do a, like a marathon. How about that? I can go eight hours, they tell me, on this one telecast. We only hang around for eight hours? I don't want to hang around for eight hours. I'm too tired. No, I don't think so. <laughs> but 827, thank you. Thank you, new subscribers. Uh, you know, for those of you who are new, I had 100 subscribers December 13th. It took me four months to get to 100, and it's taken me two months and about four days to get another 727. That's how fast we're growing, and I really appreciate it out there, folks. You're wonderful, and it's fantastic. Having a great time. We've got 18 thumbs up and one thumbs down on this video. Uh, boy, I sure could use some more thumbs up on that. If any of you haven't given me a thumbs up and you want to, now's your chance. <laughs> Please <laughs> give me a thumbs up. But uh, yeah, this is the whole thing about the Embassy Seaside and now this Carnival Legend. Yeah, the Legend's got its own problems, and these are a PR nightmare. I'll tell you this, the next three cruises on the uh, Carnival uh, Legend are uh, short cruises. I think we have a, I think we have a three, a four, and a five-day cruise back to back to back for the Legend. And the first one is already left. The three-day cruise is on now. Uh, so I can imagine that security on the, uh, the Legend today, right now, this evening, they're probably crawling around that ship, making sure there's no problems. Uh, and if they haven't hired more officers, I'd be surprised. Uh, I would be thinking that either more of the crew will have been designated to go to security or they brought people in uh, to, to add to the security. Uh, uh, because right now they're on a three-day cruise and they do not need a back-to-back -back incident on the legend. So this next three days, Carnival is praying. It's really quiet really calm and all is well on the legend and then they can get through that four-day cruise same thing then do the five-day cruise and it'll now have been about a week and a half 10 days since the incident and things will calm down we'll see um we'll have to find out what what comes of it when we see uh, uh bill Schiff is saying uh, extra glad to be going on holland conings conings dam in march 
in spite of a reviewer who said it was targeted for over 70 years old. Metamucil with every meal? <laughs> I will say, uh, uh, Bill Shep, uh, uh Holland America is a five-star line. It's a five-star line, and it appeals to the older set. Uh, certainly not a booze cruise place whatsoever. It is an elegant line. Uh, staffed by very dedicated uh, crew members. Uh, if you um, if you take in when you get there, you'll be able to go to a uh, oh probably the main ballroom on one of the afternoons, maybe the second or third day, and the captain of the ship will come out and uh, we'll do a forty five minute little meet and greet kind of deal, and open the floor open to questions, um, and he'll bring with him several of his officers. Uh, male and female crew, his hotel manager, um, the uh, director, the cruise director. And you'll quickly figure out when you see these folks, um, they are the pros. They are the top of the line people. They are probably amongst the top 5% in, in uh, talent, experience, temperament. Um, you're going to find it. You're going to have a wonderful time. Um, but if you're thinking of... Uh, running around like a wild man and drinking uh, four drinks an hour and chasing everything you can find on that. You're in for a big surprise. <laughs> you're not going to like it. <laughs> but if you're looking for a cruise where you can relax and eat some premium food, I mean, good stuff. Uh, you like to eat good, good food. You're going to like this cruise. You're going to like this ship. Uh, you're going to like its style. You're going to like its temperament. You're going to like its, uh, its vibe. You're just going to, you're just going to love it all. I loved it. I was on a I was on a uh, Hall of America for my first cruise. I was 50, 52 uh, when I was on my first cruise uh, on a, on that. I was a Hall of America cruise up and down Mexican Riviera. Loved every bit about it. Even at fifty two, I felt great. I did. I saw thirty year olds, twenty five year olds, thirty year olds. Saw a lot of younger people too, but I saw a lot of uh, uh, people my age and older retired, uh, and I could tell a lot of these retirees were well to do. They uh, they work very hard in their careers. Retired lawyers, retired doctors, uh, engineers, uh, civil servants, and uh, they had some money. And they were taking a lovely week uh, on this cruise ship, and they were being pampered, and they loved it. And I I loved being around them. I did not mind being one of the poorest guys in a rich neighborhood because that's what it was. <laughs> I got a grill deal on the balcony, and I know I was. I paid a very good price for what I was getting, and people around me were paying more. But there were also larger cabins around me too. And I didn't mind hanging around with these people. I like rich people. I think they're fantastic. So it each his own. But uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how you like it uh, when you're done. I look forward to hearing from you when you come off that ship. Uh, uh, hopefully uh, you're, uh, you're enjoying it. Uh, Jessica Duncan is saying, I wonder if any of the security will be fired from the look of that video. This is going to be an interesting thing, too. Uh, thank you, Jessica, for that. Um, you know, there's a full investigation going on. It's all on tape. <laughs> what happened? There are cameras on that cruise ship that Carnival has. I cannot imagine that they would have eliminated that tape, too. I would imagine they, they have the uh, digital version, and it's already gone to internal affairs. Um, We'll find out. Uh, maybe Carnival will make a big deal of it. Maybe they will come out in a week or two or three and say six members of our securities team have been, you know, been fired. Uh, we've offered uh, full refunds uh, to all of the people affected. Uh, we're offering a free cruise to those people on top of that. And, you know, they're going to try to make good on it. I don't know. Don't know how this is going to work out. Uh, Doreen is saying, Doreen Chapman, we are on Celebrity next month. Pretty quiet on there, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hall in America. And celebrity, uh, two very good lines. And as I was saying the other day, if you, if those of you who are just joining me or first timers, I did a video with all of you guys here a couple of days ago talking about the top rated cruise ships as rated by cruisers rather than professional, you know, spokespeople. Actual cruise reviews, celebrity cruise ships, number one, two, three in the top five for quality of food, quality of the room. Uh, value for your money celebrity ranks very highly and if you want to be on a classy ship a nice cruise line celebrity's the way to go hall uh, royal caribbean owns celebrity just so you know uh it's kind of like the hall in america for uh, carnival 
Um, let's see here. Soul Full Music 100. Uh, hi, all. I was on the MSCC side last week. Entertainment was so bad. And there are still bad smells in some area of the ship. See? There you go. Last week. Thank you for that comment, Soulful Music. I'm really glad you said that. I'm really glad you came on came onto my live stream. That's what I'm talking about. We we hear on the outside <laughs> before we say all's good. We're looking for reviews like this to to be 180 degrees, where someone like this comes out and says was on the cruise last week and it was great. Went everywhere. I couldn't find the smell. I couldn't find, you know, I checked the entertainment. It's fantastic. The food is great. Haven't got that yet. We're getting, we're still getting these comments even now. And you were on a week ago. My goodness. That's, uh, that's surprising. And that is consistent with what we've been hearing. Uh, Ch uh, Richard Kormaski saying, funny story. We were a group of 500 and the top officers had a meet and greet for us walked around the corner to get into meeting and all the officers were with the captain. Uh, I said, who's driving the ship? <laughs> the captain said, we're on autopilot and in the middle of the ocean, it won't hit anything. <laughs> uh, I can guarantee you that uh, there's somebody in the bridge. <laughs> it might be on autopilot, but someone was watching the autopilot. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good, Richard. I love it. Uh, Heather Young is saying, when uh, when we when will the next new cruise ship be released, and what will it be? I uh, think it's uh, Norwegian Bliss is awfully close to coming out. Um, I'm thinking about who else is coming. Uh, Symphony of the Seas is not too far out either. Uh, it's now on sea trials, uh, and it's looking quite done. Uh, there were some uh, card articles a couple days ago that it's about 99% completed. So these these are two that are definitely coming and they will be, they'll be all over the news. So we're gonna hear all about them. The Bliss, the Norwegian Bliss, we're gonna hear about that ship because it's got the electric go-karts on the on the top at the very back. It's a 1000 foot long go-kart track and you'll be driving these electric go-karts up to 30 miles an hour on the uh, on the Bliss. So we're gonna hear all about this. It's gonna make, it's gonna make every news, uh, every website, you name it. I'm surprised they haven't contacted me to uh, come down for the grand opening. Uh, you know, Bruce, traveling with Bruce, you've got these dedicated followers. You're watching these, doing these daily live streams. You should come down and, and do a live stream from our ship, I say to Royal to uh, uh, Carnival. Uh, no, to Norwegian. Yeah, Norwegian. Yeah, that's it. Norwegian Cruise Lines. You should get Bruce from traveling with Bruce to come to your ship, the Bliss, and, and ride one of those go-karts. Yeah, yeah. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Okay, get back to the show. Um, <laughs> on Saturdays, I have too much fun. <laughs> Debbie Manuel saying that video shows all the employees that no longer work on that ship. At least it should be showing all the employees that no longer work on that ship. Yeah. Oh, well, Debbie, let's see what Carnival does about this. Uh, this will be most uh, revealing is the word. Yeah. Revealing. I think it'll be real revealing. Uh, DN, I agree with you about Hall in America. Dignified, great food, and entertainment. Yep. Uh, the linens in the bedroom uh, for your bedding. Primo. Egyptian cotton. Really nice. Uh, the rooms are spotless. The stewards, top notch. Uh, the, they're happy. They love their jobs. They love working for Royal Caribbean, the, the crew. The buffet staff. I like the buffet staff. Normally, the folks in the buffet, these poor people, uh, this is the entry point for, for waiters and waitresses and bus boys, bus girls. This is where you start. You get your first contract from the Philippines to work on a cruise ship, and you're going to be in the, uh, the uh, you know, waitering, waiter, waiter or waitressing staff area. You start at the buffet. And within a month, within a week, you're going, oh, my God, the work never ends. They never stop coming. There's no rhyme or reason to it. People walk all over the place. They sit all over the place. The, there's food everywhere. People spill stuff because they're carrying their own food. It's mayhem. And then the kids, the kids, my God, the kids, they're running around and they're out of control. And, you know, some are terrible, some are great. So if you can survive the first year's contract on uh, in a buffet as a crew member, you're going to get a new contract 
and uh, you'll be moved up eventually. You'll be in a specialty restaurant, or you'll get the better part of the ship, or what have you. Anyway, on Holland America, on the Oosterdam, we really enjoyed the buffet staff. They were fantastic. The waiters had come by. That they would bring you coffee, ask you what you like. On the fifth day, the guy remembered my name, Bruce. How are you today, Robin? How are you today? Would you like another coffee today? Would you like a decaf tea? They knew what we wanted. It was in the buffet. Fantastic. So yeah, a Hall America. I highly recommend Hall America. You can get a Hall America cruise, which you can. Uh, going out of Miami for under seven hundred a week. That is a giveaway. You're talking five star cruise line for that well, should be a thousand a week. You're getting it for six fifty, six seventy a week. You take that deal right now. You take that deal. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Deanne is agreeing. Uh, Richard Kormaski, yes, but he was funny, approachable. Uh, oh, the captain, yeah. <laughs> Great sense of humor, right? Eh? That's fantastic. I mean, these captains are, generally speaking, they are king of PR. I mean, they're generally a delight to be around. They have tough decisions to make. Let's not kid around. They are running a serious investment. 600 million, 800 million, a billion dollar vessel. There's a lot on the table here. They're under pressure, but they're also masters of, of public relations. And uh, you get to meet them in a setting like that. You can't beat that. Yeah, that's, that's a rare opportunity that you get to meet them like that. Fantastic. That, that, that would be great. Betsy Gerlecki is here from Hamilton. Hello, one below Celsius in Hamilton. You made it, Betsy, towards the end, but you made it. Welcome to the show. We've been talking about this uh, Australian thing. Oh, my goodness. And we've been talking about the MSCC side. It seems like every episode that I, I have on this live stream, the MSCC side comes up in discussions. And I, I know why. I know why. $800 million vessel, you'd think they'd get it right. Uh, it wasn't like a cheap ship, you know. My goodness. Uh, but we just had a comment barely 10 minutes ago. Gentleman was on the ship last week. Smell the smell. They found it. They, they, the poop smell still there. And the entertainment sucked. <sighs> when are they going to get it together? That ship looks so nice. It looks so stylish and elegant and, uh, you know, uh, modern and uh, really cool. And there are these problems. This, this is not good, not good. And MSC insists. They're insisting. It's all fixed. It's all good. It's all okay now. Not until we hear it from people directly will we believe it. Anyway, there, there you go. Unbelievable. Yeah, what can I What can I say? Uh, oh, we got five likes. Thank you. Five thumbs up just came in. I'm up to 23. Thank you very much. 23 to 1 is the score for positive versus negative. I really appreciate the thumbs ups, guys. Thank you so much. Any, any thumbs ups you can give me, I'll take them. If they allowed you to give you two, I'd ask you for two, but you can only give me one at a time. <laughs> And the new subscribers. Thank you, new subscribers. Uh, I just heard 827. Is that the number? Fantastic. Let me see what my channel says here. If I even get it on my channel. I don't. Uh, so I don't know how many I have exactly. But 827 last I heard. Uh, I can't uh, I can't thank you folks enough. We're shooting for 1,000. We'll see what we can do. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there. Now, going forward on Monday, I'm back on the air. Monday to Friday, as always, 5 o'clock Eastern time. And uh, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about on Monday. I hope I'm not having to talk about MSC Seaside. If I do, I hope I can tell you I heard from a cruiser who was on Seaside. They had a great time. I hope I can tell you. Uh, the Australia thing, I, I have a feeling I might be talking a little more about the Australia thing uh, because more news will come out now. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, and the second cruise will be almost over. Uh, if they start it today, it'll end on Monday, maybe Tuesday. So by Tuesday show, this 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 latest Carnival Legend Cruise will be through, and we'll find out if anything happened on that cruise. Oh, I hope not, for their sake. Uh, we shall see. Anyway, uh, if there's any topics you folks want me to cover, let me know anytime. Uh, you can always write me a comment uh, below. After this video airs, it'll become a regular video in my library in about the next 20 minutes, and you'll be able to watch it anytime you want. And a lot of you folks out there will watch this video later, and you're welcome to comment on anything I'm doing here. And good or bad or indifferent, well, I welcome all, and I appreciate it. I'm happy to reply back to you. Uh, I've had a great time today. Uh, we are, I'm not going out today. <laughs> Staying inside. You want another peek at what it looks like out there? Let me let me just tilt this camera. Let me just see if you can see it. Let me just, here we go. Can you see that out there, folks? There we go. That's snow. That's, it's just coming down. 
It's just coming down on my banister here and outside. I mean, it's a blizzard. I wouldn't want to be driving in this. No, <laughs> I do not want to be driving in this. I think I'll just stay indoors. I'm nice and safe and nice and dry here. I'll watch some Olympic coverage perhaps today and uh, see how the Canadian hockey team is doing. Of course, what else am I going to watch? Curling. I'll watch curling. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody, for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to say my goodbyes. going to double check my message one more time. Now, rest, rest your voice. Maybe take a steam bath. I heard that was good for the voice Steve was saying. Richard is saying, take care, Bruce. Waiting for snow in Philly. Have a great weekend. Thanks, you guys. I've had a great day today. It's always a pleasure talking to you guys. I love it. I think we've set another high standard on how many viewers we've had on this video. I, I'm just so grateful. And uh, anyone you know that will enjoy the channel, tell them about us, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, Sylvan saying, snow, how depressing. <laughs> <laughs> the man with the cigar and the rum and coke in the afternoon in Delray, Florida. Tell me about it. I'd rather be down where you are. <laughs> Try visiting. Thanks, Bruce, and all. Have a good night, everybody. All right, I'm going to say my goodbyes. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today. Really enjoyed it. I hope you have a great uh, rest of the weekend. We will see you Monday at 5 o'clock Eastern time, and uh, you guys take care. We'll see you next time, okay? Bye for now.